You're watching Machindo's hometown station, HTV One. Everybody, Brett Boyd from the Market House. Don't miss our new expanded summer hours from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And don't miss two fantastic deals on ground chuck at just $3.99 a pound or Dutch Farms butter at just $2.99. Just two great deals and two more reasons to come see us at the Market House. Open 8 to 8, seven days a week. We'll see you there. Tired of having everyone know you're coming before you arrive because of your exhaust? If so, then it's time to call the experts at RS Custom Exhaust in Hillsdale. RS Custom Exhaust has all the tools and parts to make your vehicle quiet again. And for you sports car enthusiasts, if you're looking for the roar to be the king of the roads, RS Custom Exhaust can help you too. With free estimates and first class service, RS Custom Exhaust has your vehicle covered. So stop and see them today, located at 1461 Vera Drive in Hillsdale. From Machindo's News Leader. This is HTV One News at Noon. Authorities in Indiana have issued a silver alert for this girl, 13-year-old Montana Schaefer. Well, she was last seen Sunday evening at 8.15 p.m. in Fort Wayne. Well, she is believed to be in danger and may require medical assistance. Well, she's described as a white male, or white female, uh, 5 feet 6 inches and 185 pounds, blonde hair and blue eyes. Well, she was last seen wearing a green jumpsuit and she may be riding a silver 21 speed bicycle. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Montana Schaefer, you're asked to call the Fort Wayne Police Department at 260-427-2213 or call 911. An alleged killer in custody accused of stabbing a man to death at a local motel. Well, good afternoon, Michendo. I'm Scott Pienta. Well, here you go. This is the uh, Miami man facing a charge of open murder after an attack at the Coldwater Quality Inn, according to WTVB and the Daily Reporter. Now, both men were apparently employees at the Clemens Pork Plant. Now, Ariel Maria Gonzalez and Juan or as Testi Oresti Gonzalez Rodriguez were drinking earlier Friday night when got, he, they got into an argument of some kind before Gonzalez stabbed Rodriguez around 3 a.m. Saturday morning. Well, police arrived to find Rodriguez unresponsive inside a motel room and he was pronounced dead at that scene. Gonzalez fled, but witnesses gave the authorities the description of the suspect's vehicle and Michigan State Police troopers stopped him on US 12 near Quincy. Well, Gonzalez was arraigned later Saturday and remains in the Branch County Jail without bond. A preliminary hearing will be scheduled within the next three weeks. Well, we're going to be turning now to the latest coronavirus numbers. There has been a significant increase in figures from Branch County. That adds 57 new cases and brings the new total up there to 221, now the highest case count among any county in the Machendo area. Now, we're awaiting a word from the Community Health Agency on why the count jumped so suddenly. Branch County still reports two deaths and 14 probable cases. Hillsdale County holds steady at 171 confirmed cases, 9 probable, and 25 deaths. Lenawee County reports 163 confirmed cases, 130 of those recovering, and 6 deaths with 33 probable cases. There's a reason that professionals shop at Jonesville Lumber. They expect quality, service, and knowledge. And that's exactly what they receive. For nearly 100 years, Jonesville Lumber has been family owned. We take pride in serving our area with great products at competitive prices. We have dedicated project estimators in-house that will help figure the materials needed to complete your next task at hand. Whether you're building your dream home, adding a pole barn, building a deck, updating your kitchen, or painting your front door, let Jonesville Lumber help you with your next project. Authentic Mexican food is just a short drive away at El Cerrito in Coldwater and Hillsdale. The variety-packed menu has something for everyone with classic Mexican dishes, El Cerrito specialties, and tasty treats for dessert. Don't forget the best margaritas in town with margarita specials Friday and Saturday. And carry-out ordering is great for work lunches or picking up dinner for the family. Make your next meal a fiesta for your taste buds at El Cerrito on Chicago Street in downtown Coldwater and Carlton Road in Hillsdale.
Foothill Hillsdale's Tuesday night summer concert series returns to Miss St Mrs. Stocks Park on June 30th. But the Daily News says that they're going to do it without the woman who ran the show in the previous years. Sally Fallon, who passed away at the age of 93 while visiting family in California in late February. Well, prior to her passing, she had also urged the rest of the organizing community to committee to find a chairman, and the committee members themselves divided up the duties that Fallon had been doing herself. Well, that put the responsibility of scheduling and marketing in the hands of Corey Cham Champion, who has been running sound for the concert series for most of its existence. Now, Champion says city manager David Mackey asked them to hold off on announcing this year's lineup until the early June city council meeting just to make sure everything was in order. Well, now that that's happening, happened and barred any problems with state level pandemic restrictions, the first 2020 concert in the park is set for June 30th with Jim Worthington, who will sing gospel and Americana tunes. Then Bob Pogue and Tara Renee will headline on June 7th, and then June 14th will be a local cover band, Midnight Stew. Well, Scotty Butters will perform on July 21st, and the Hillsdale Wind Symphony will play a concert on July 28th. And the final show of the season will be August 4th with the Jackson French Quarter Dixieland Band. Well, all those shows starting at 7.30 p.m. Now that's one day short of the unusual seven concert series, but the champion says the pandemic simply doesn't give the time to work with as usual. So there is also a need for a contingency plan and champion says as soon as he has one, that will be announced. The official name of the event is still Movies on Lane, but the telegram says it won't take place on Lane Street for at least the first installment this year. But instead, it'll happen at Blissfield High School's parking lot. Now, school distancing requirements prompted the change, making the June 18th showing of Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, a drive-in affair. Well, that means the usual pre-show at games, activities, and entertainers will be missing, and there won't be any concessions. But you're welcome to bring your own food and drinks. Well, organizer Ashley Bailey says that uh, this format is a bit of a trial run, but the group behind the series is hoping that the showings in July and August can move back to Lane Street as normal. July 16th movie will be Jumanji, The Next Level, and the live action remake of Disney's The Lion King will be shown on August 20th. All of those movies will start after sunset no earlier than 9 p.m. Well, the telegram says that the newly renovated Madison High School football stadium will hold its first event on August 7th as the 97 graduates of the Trojans class of 2020 will get their traditional commencement ceremony. Well, that will also make it the first graduation ceremony that Madison has ever held outdoors and Principal Kristen Thomas says it will be a memorable moment as those students will be the first to ever walk through the tunnel and onto that field. Well, Thomas says in spite of everything going on, the community is proud of the graduates and it's important to celebrate and acknowledge their achievements. Well, county fair directors across Ohio are thanking Governor Mike DeWine for his promise to send $50,000 their way for junior fairs. Well, Williams County Agricultural Society President Matt Kennedy told the Bryan Times that it would, be a tremendous, it would be tremendously helpful as running those events without anything else at the fairgrounds would have cost roughly $100,000. Well, the funding was announced alongside updated guidelines, including allowing livestock competitions as, as normal with as much social distancing and wearing of masks as possible. Auctions are encouraged to be virtual, but that's not a requirement. Barns and other buildings should be open to the ventilated as possible. Grandstands, seating, limit, seating limits are set at half capacity and no more than 2,500 seats. But Kennedy says that he's not too concerned about it affecting Williams County Fair, saying that he expects the guidelines to be relaxed even more than by September. <coughs> and there are no con concerts at the Williams County Fair this year anyway due to the budget shortfall from the Blue Oyster Cult concert last year. Now, there will, however, be free entertainment on the stage on the north side of the Gillette building every night. Well, OptumServe recently closed their semi-permanent location at the Angola Armory, but locals may still want to drive to the next closest clinic in Kendallville. 
Well, according to the Herald Republican State Health Commissioner, Dr. Chris Box has announced that all Optum Serve testing locations are now open to every Hoosier, regardless of symptoms, including children under the age of 12. While on the day of the announcement, Indiana hit an all-time high mark for the number of tests processed in the 24 hours with 7,838 tests run in one day. 140,000 unemployment claims have been reinstated in Michigan after they had been flagged in a massive effort to combat fraud. Payment was stopped to about 340,000 claims after state officials said that they were seeing signs of fraudulent behavior. WKZO and Associated Press say that 140,000 claims that had been allowed to continue came as a result of identifying information being verified. Spokesman Jason Moon says it's not clear on how long it will take for the Unemployment Insurance Agency to verify the remaining 200,000 accounts. But while they will normally take several months, it says it won't let it happen there. Well, touting a British study that showed Michigan is one of the longest drops in the coronavirus infection rate, Governor Gretchen Whitmer has announced the reopening overnight of overnight camps and school sports activities. The Associated Press says camps will still be subject to state guidelines and campers should be kept in groups of 10 or less, while policy should be established regarding masks. While school sports activities can resume, and to some degree participants must still observe social distancing and, and indoor gyms and recreation centers will remain closed. Well, today is also the day when hair salons and other personal care businesses can reopen in Michigan. A congressman from Indiana wants to get kids back to school buildings next year, no matter what the state of pandemic is. The Herald Republican says Representative Jim Banks introduced a bill at the House last week that would cut off federal funding to any school that refuses to reopen for in-person learning in the fall. The reopen, uh, the reopen Our Schools Act was also sponsored by Representative Tom Tiffy, uh, Tiffany of Wisconsin. Banks called America is the Banks called America is the land of opportunity where education is guaranteed to all children. And he says right now we're not living up to that guarantee. Now Tiffany added that open-ended school shutdowns have set students back and made it harder for them to teach their teachers to teach. Banks said that the conversation needs to be changed from saying our schools might not reopen in the fall to our schools will reopen in the fall. And here's what we need to do uh, to do it. Oh, excuse me. The recent Wall Street Journal report opened the remote learning this spring didn't work and the only served to reveal this country's digital divide. School lunch programs also losing millions of dollars while trying to feed hungry students during the lockdown and the journal reports that many of them could be broke by the fall. The press release from the bank's office cited research uh, suggesting that the children are, in, uh, are at low risk of contracting the coronavirus and that those who do contract it rarely develop the serious case and are less likely to spread it to adults. The bill would also require students to reopen by September 8th and provide a plan of to reopen safely. Only in-person classes would count, though the Secretary of Education would be allowed to grant waivers and a maximum liability protection would be provided. Well, still to come, a statue of an infamous, infamously racist former Dearborn mayor is no longer welcome in that city. Now, the family wants to move it to Branch County. And the Michi and Michigan is expanding its law enforcement oversight committee to include civilians. Well, the HTV One News at noon. We'll be right back after this. There's a reason the professionals shop at Jonesville Lumber. They expect quality, service, and knowledge. And that's exactly what they receive. For nearly 100 years, Jonesville Lumber has been family owned. We take pride in serving our area with great products at competitive prices. We have dedicated project estimators in-house that will help figure the materials needed to complete your next task at hand. Whether you're building your dream home, adding a pole barn, building a deck, updating your kitchen, or painting your front door, let Jonesville Lumber help you with your next project. Authentic Mexican food is just a short drive away at El Cerrito in Coldwater and Hillsdale. The variety-packed menu has something for everyone with classic Mexican dishes, El Cerrito specialties, and tasty treats for dessert. Don't forget the best margaritas in town with margarita specials Friday and Saturday. And carryout ordering is great for work lunches or picking up dinner for the family. 
Make your next meal a fiesta for your taste buds at El Cerrito on Chicago Street in downtown Coldwater and Carlton Road in Hillsdale. Well, Union Township's officials are discussing the placement of a statue on the burial site of a former Dearborn mayor who was a well-known racist. The Daily Reporter says the statue of Orville Hubbard, who served as Dearborn's mayor from 1942 to 1978, was removed from the Dearborn City Hall property in 2015. Well, last week it was removed to the, uh, removed to the grounds of the uh, Dearborn Historical Museum after someone put a Black Lives Matter t-shirt on it. Now, Hubbard's family, who were early settlers in Branch County, wants to move it to his gravesite in Union City. The family has been in talks with the township for about a year, but the village is deeply associated with the abolishment movement, uh, the abolitionist movement, and the Underground Railroad. As and at last, at last one former village official has stated opposition to the statue. Hubbard is buried across two older, uh, across two older smaller plots next to his daughter and another empty plot owned by his family. And apart from the controversy, the statue rests rises raises some concerns about the number of monuments on the site and the accessibility of the empty plot. The decision has been delayed until the village board August's meeting, while officials look at other options. Well, mending race relations and uniting a change will be the focus of what the organizers are calling a massive church service being organized by Bethany Assembly and Restore World Church in Adrian. The telegram says clergy are calling the message an, an, an essential conversation coming in light of the recent death of black people at the hands of police, including Georgia Floyd, uh, uh, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. A prelude to the service was streamed yesterday at Bethany's Assembly Facebook page hosted by the church's pastor Brian Henley and Restore World Church's pastor Claude Bevere. Now, the larger service will take place on Sunday, June 28th at Bethany Assembly on US 223 in Adrian starting at 10 a.m. Individuals and other houses of worship across Illinois County are invited to attend. The Michigan Commission on Law Enforcement Standards and expanding to, is expanding to aid, add three seats for people outside law enforcement, as well as a director of the state's Department of Civil Rights. The Associated Press says Governor Gretchen Whitmer announced that expansion on Friday. The commission is, asked, uh, is tasked with providing leadership and standards for training and license, uh, licensing law enforcement officers in the Great Lakes State, and at present, most of the 19 members are affiliated with law enforcement agencies, police unions, or police advocacy groups, with no representation from the civil rights group. Michigan State Police Director Colonel Joe Gasper supported the move, saying that he welcomes the necessary outside perspective and another layer of transparency and accountability. The additional commission members have not yet been appointed. Well, quick traffic update for you if you're headed out and about in Swanton today. The Enterprise says Norfolk Southern will be doing track alignment work this week, so the crossings at Main Street and Munson Road will both be closed starting today. Now, you can use Hallett Avenue to get around those closures. Well, a vehicle crashes through a Tecumseh house, and police say the driver was high at the time. Plus, an Edgerton man is charged with a child sex crimes in Defiance County. Plus, a man who tried to hire a hitman to kill Williams County social worker is filing suit against that agency. Well, those stories and more when we come back. The Saucy Dogs is the name and barbecue is the game. Come on down for a good time and some great food. At Saucy Dogs, try our barbecue nachos or our tasty ribs. We'll have you howling for more. Saucy Dogs, downtown Jonesville. Does your vehicle sound like a tractor putting down the road? Then you need to see the experts at RS Custom Exhaust in Hillsdale. They will give you a free estimate along with first class customer service. They custom make any exhaust needed for your vehicle. Stop and see them today located at 1461 Vera Drive in Hillsdale. Hello everybody, Brett Boyd from the Market House. Don't miss our new expanded summer hours from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And don't miss two fantastic deals on ground chuck at just $3.99 a pound or Dutch Farms Butter at just $2.99. Just two great deals and two more reasons to come see us at the Market House. Open 8 to 8, seven days a week. We'll see you there. 
but one driver was partially ejected in an accident Thursday. It happened just before 6 p.m. at the corner of County Road B and State Road 108 in Fulton County's Clinton Township. 37-year-old John Reeb of Archibald was westbound when he failed to yield at the stop sign. His minivan was hit, hit uh, by a northbound pickup truck driven by 35-year-old Nathan Earl of Wasion. While both vehicles went off the west side of the 108 and Reeb's van flipped over. Now, he was not wearing a seatbelt at the time, and he was airlifted to St. Vincent's Hospital with serious injuries. Earl suffered only minor injuries and was treated at the scene. Alcohol is believed to be a factor, and the crash is still under investigation by the Ohio State Police. The telegram at WLKI says this was a scene at the Tecumseh home after a vehicle crashed into it last week. Now, now, it happened around 10.30 Thursday night on a, 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 excuse me, Occidental Highway near Brown Street. A crossover vehicle had plowed right through the front right of the house and left the black hitting a corner of the garage before coming to rest in a patch of woods at the back of the lot. Tire tracks show that the vehicle was westbound on Brown before crossing Occidental uh, and going through the yard into the house. Now, there were people inside the home at the time, but none of them were injured. The two men inside the vehicle were taken to St. Joseph Mercy Hospital where possible injuries, and the driver was arrested on suspicion of driving under the influence of drugs. Both are known to be, uh, both are known to be males in their 20s, but the names are being withheld pending arraignment. Well, Tecumseh Police are still investigating. If you have any information, you're asked to call them at 517-423-7494. Uh, and the other reporting was WLEN and not WKLX. Uh, a fugitive from Kentucky was arrested in Fayette Saturday night. Police there responded to a disturbance call on the west side of a Village where they found a group of people. Well, one of them was George Coleman, who had a nationwide warrant out for his arrest and a history of assault, sex crimes, and drug possession. Well, Coleman is arrested and currently lodged at the CCNO, awaiting extradition back to Kentucky. Well, an Edgerton man has been charged with sex crimes and child porn in Defiance County. The Bryan Times Brian Time says 36-year-old Robert Salisbury was indicted on a two second-degree felony counts of pandering sexually oriented, oriented material involving a minor and 24 counts of third, third degree fel, uh, felony sexual battery. The press release from Defiance County Prosecutor's Office says Salisbury photographed a minor engaged in sexual activity in November of 2015 and between January of 2014 to December 2015. He engaged in sexual conduct with a juvenile female on numerous occasions. Well, Salisbury is also facing a count uh, of fourth degree felony gross sexual imposition in Defiance County after a November 2019 arrest in Hicksville. Well, he pleaded not guilty to that charge in December. And a Brian, a Brian man who tried to hire a hitman to kill a social worker has filed another lawsuit against a local agency. The Brian Times says David Culver who pleaded guilty to that crime in November, has filed three suits so far. The first, filed two weeks after his entered a plea, accuses the Bryan police of violating his civil rights and harassing him. The second, filed a week later, accuses the Correction Center of Northwest Ohio of withholding mail, legal access, and medical treatment, as well as disregarding his privacy during a medical cons uh, consultation, sexually harassing him, providing substandard treatment, and showing favoritism. Now Culver has filed a suit against the Williams County Office of Job and Family Services seeking $250,000 for mental, physical, and emotional distress, as well as harassment and hum humiliation in the weeks leading up to his removal of his children from his home. He claims that a JFS worker circumvented his established processes to take his children away and verbally abused and threatened language stalked or followed him without cause on numerous occasions in the state vehicle and lied in court as well as other claims. JFS said Bryan police have declined to comment but CCNO Director Dennis Sullivan says the regional facility takes every claim seriously. Culver is currently behind being held at the CCNO awaiting sentencing on July 14th. Now, he could spend up to 10 years in prison. Well, when we come back, a major ruling just came down from the Supreme Court this morning, and uh, we'll tell you all about it right after this. 
El Cerrito's variety packed menu has something for everyone. With generous servings and lots of flavor, you'll think of it as a fiesta for your taste buds. Dine in or carry out at El Cerrito on Chicago Street in downtown Coldwater and Carlton Road in Hillsdale. There's a reason that professionals shop at Jonesville Lumber. They expect quality, service, and knowledge. And that's exactly what they receive. For nearly 100 years, Jonesville Lumber has been family owned. We take pride in serving our area with great products at competitive prices. We have dedicated project estimators in-house that will help figure the materials needed to complete your next task at hand. Whether you're building your dream home, adding a pole barn, building a deck, updating your kitchen, or painting your front door, let Jonesville Lumber help you with your next project. The Saucy Dogs is the name and barbecue is the game. Come on down for a good time and some great food. At Saucy Dogs, try our barbecue nachos or our tasty ribs. We'll have you howling for more. Saucy Dogs, downtown Jonesville. Well, we close today with some breaking news from the Supreme Court where the ruling had just been handed down this morning in a landmark case that deals, it deals a major blow to President Trump's attempts to curb the rights of the LGBT community. A 63 ruling says that the Title VII of the Civil Rights Act regarding sexual discrimination does apply to gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender employees. Well, according to CNN, this uh, option was written by Justice Neil uh, Gordish. Now, along with Chief Justice John Roberts, they joined the court's four liberal justices to form a majority. Now, Gorsuch wrote that the, an employer who fires an individual for being homosexual or transgender fires that person uh, for traits or actions it would not have questioned in members of a different sex. Sex plays an, a necessary and disguisable, undisguisable role in their decision, exactly what Title VII forbids. Justices Samuel Alto and Brett Kavanaugh uh, uh, dissented with Alto claiming that no Title VII was not intended to include gay and transgender people. And Kavanaugh argued that Congress should have taken up the issue, not the court. The ruling itself only applies to employment, but it sets the precedent for similar rulings in other areas, with some experts putting it on par with the 2015's ruling legalizing same-sex marriage. Well, those are today's top stories. We'll see you right back here tomorrow for HTV One News at Noon. Don't forget you can find more of our news on our live broadcast 24-7 at HTV1.net. For all of us here at HTV One, I'm Scott Pienta. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you back here tomorrow at noon. Tired of having everyone know you're coming before you arrive because of your exhaust? If so, then it's time to call the experts at RS Custom Exhaust in Hillsdale. RS Custom Exhaust has all the tools and parts to make your vehicle quiet again. And for you sports car enthusiasts, if you're looking for the roar to be the king of the roads, RS Custom Exhaust can help you too. With free estimates and first class service, RS Custom Exhaust has your vehicle covered. So stop and see them today, located at 1461 Vera Drive in Hillsdale. Hello everybody, Brett Boyd from the Market House. Don't miss our new expanded summer hours from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And don't miss two fantastic deals on ground chuck at just $3.99 a pound or Dutch Farms Butter at just $2.99. Just two great deals and two more reasons to come see us at the Market House. Open 8 to 8, seven days a week. We'll see you there.